Everybody, square pizza. Square. They make a square pizza, and that was weird. What are these people crazy? No one even heard of square pizza. It was it was unheard of. You fell in love with it. It was great. But there's purists that will come in and say, nope, cheese and pepperoni, original sauce, that's it. Detroit style pizza is gonna be something when every time you take a bite, you're gonna taste every product that's on there. It became sort of the Detroit style as they're referred to it now, but it's actually Sicilian style that was that originated in Detroit. Detroiters came back from the war and some had acquired well, a more refined palate. Some were stationed in Great Britain, and so they wanted English food. Fish and chip places like on Gratia, where we were at, there was three or four of them in two miles. On the east side, Gus Guerra owned a tavern at Six Mile and Conan. It was a gathering place, like Buddy's Rendezvous. Let's rendezvous at Buddy's, because the guys would come in and play cards. Gus came from San Marino, that little country surrounded by Italy, and he had married into a Sicilian family. And my father said, you know what, he says, there's really no pizzas here. We got one pizza in the city. So we said, we started making pizza. Buddy's Rendezvous was at the front end of what soon would become Detroit's pizza craze. Everybody was throwing up pizzerias. There was lots of pizza, round pizza, but Buddy's stayed square and thicker and they used trays that were supposed to hold small car parts or even catch oil dripping from milling machines. It's a labor-intensive process to do our pizza. It requires multiple stretchings where you take a round pizza, you take the dough, you flip it, twist it, and it's ready to go. With us, it's got to sit and proof. And that part of it, it didn't maybe appeal to a lot of pizza people at the time. Buddy's added one more ingredient, too, brick cheese. Brick cheese from Wisconsin, another place with a lot of Poles and Germans, just like over on Detroit's east side. The pepperoni is underneath the cheese, which is unique. What it's known for is the blend of the cheese and the flavors of the sauce with the dough, creating this crunchy pizza that has, a, has got a great taste. Yep, business was going good all right, but it wasn't going quite so well for Gus. My father left Buddies in 1953. There was a little internal problem between the partners, which can happen in any relationship. Two guys, both named Jimmy, wanted Buddies, and so Gus sold it to him. He promised Buddies he'd move it at least two miles away, and he found a little farmhouse in East Detroit. It was called Cloverleaf Bar when he bought it. While Gus made his pizza north of Eight Mile Road on Gratiot back in Detroit, these women, led by a Sicilian named Connie Pinchinato, kept faithful to the original Buddy's recipe. Wesley Pecula started as a dishwasher there when he was just in high school. Whatever Connie tells you, you do. Whatever Savita tells you, you do. And Anna, the one on the left, you could see the size of her arm. So trust me, I listen to her more than anybody. <laughs> By the 1960s, Buddies had become an East Side institution. Sports teams that played at nearby Jane Field held pizza parties there. Sometimes, hey, they even lined up around the block just waiting for seats. Let's put it this way. In 1970, Buddies was the story in that area. They had other places. I mean, they had other pizzerias on the East Side. There was many of them, but none of them had the reputation that Buddies had. My parents went there. Uh, around 1969, and my parents were just loved the atmosphere. 1970 was the year that really changed everything. Buddies was sold again to Bill and Shirley Jacobs this time, who arrived just in time for the great pizza contest created by the Detroit News. We had a good pizza, and we thought we'd have a good shot at it. In a city full of round pizzas, it was between the Cloverleaf and Buddies for the squares but only one of them would get to compete. My father called about it, my brother called about it, and uh, they told him that you're excluded, you can't enter the contest because you're not inside Detroit city limits. As the omen was, Buddy's was picked as the best pizza place in the city. Buddy's took first place, and uh, it hurt us, I know that, but there was nothing we could do about it. 
By the late 70s, Buddy's was adding another location out in Warren. Every story got better by the day, so <laughs> at some point it became legendary. In 1980, Ronald Reagan came to town for the Republican National Convention. It was big news, of course, and Buddy's decided to feed square pizza to all those hungry reporters down at Cobo Hall, and <laughs> they liked it. Every news person you could mention, every anchor, signed that Buddy's book said better than New York. I mean, we had Ted Koppel, this knocks anything out of New York. I mean, we had so many of those quotes. Now Buddies is spread out all over Metro Detroit. Maybe now it's a brand. It's the test of time. How much time? Well, almost 70 years. And Cloverleaf is still going strong too. And then there's Louis. Now we've got to mention Louis. That's Louis Pizza without an E. He made it originally at Buddy's, and then he made it at Shields, and well, he decided to do it all by himself right here in Hazel Park nearly 40 years ago. Detroit Square Pizza is good, of course, but we haven't talked about Detroit's iconic round pizzas. Well, maybe more on that next time. <laughs>